All right, so condoms. They're reliable, essential, and potentially life-saving. Put it on, throw it away, never think about it again, right? You definitely don't think too much about how they're made, but behind this simple invention is a production process involving latex, science, and a lot of quality control. So let's dive in and see what makes this barrier method so effective and how it's crafted to protect and serve. Condoms are slim, flexible sheaths. They're typically worn by men during sex to help prevent pregnancy. Plus, they keep sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, at bay. In fact, they're one of the most popular forms of contraception in the US. They land in third place, right after female sterilization and birth control pills. According to a 1995 survey, about 17.7% .7 of people relied on condoms for birth control. So they've been an important tool for quite a while, and they're more effective than you might think. Used perfectly, condoms have only a 2-3% failure rate. That's not perfect, but pretty close to it. Well, most condoms are made from trusty latex. But here's the crazy part. You can find ones made from lamb cecum. Yep, you heard that right. And more recently, from polyurethane. But condoms aren't just about preventing pregnancy. They're key players in STI prevention too. Since the 1980s, public health campaigns and the US Surgeon Generals have hailed condoms as the great invention it is. These latex defenders hold steady against HIV and AIDS and other infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea. And with the support of health officials and a mission to protect, condoms are easy to find at every drugstore, corner shop, and even vending machines. So it's no wonder that about 450 million condoms are sold each year in the US alone. And if you've ever bought one, you know the options can look endless. There are smooth ones, ribbed ones, extra thin ones, lubricated, non-lubricated, you name it, there's something for everyone. But when it comes down to the basics, most latex condoms are pretty similar. They all go through some intense testing to make sure they're reliable. And while latex is king in the condom world, you can still find the original skin condoms made from lamb cecum. But a quick heads up, they only protect against pregnancy, not STIs. Then there's the newer polyurethane option for those with latex allergies. But even that one is still catching up on STI protection studies. But don't let all these options fool you. Condoms may seem like a modern invention, but they go back thousands of years. The earliest recorded use dates to around 1350 BCE in ancient Egypt. This is when condoms were made from linen or animal hides. But the use was different. These condoms were used for protection against infections rather than birth control. Other ancient civilizations like the Romans used versions made from animal intestines. And in China, silk paper condoms were used with oil for lubrication. But one guy made it all too real. The first documented description of a condom came in 1564 from Italian anatomist Gabriele Fallopio. He's the same guy who gave Fallopian tubes the name. He described a linen sheath tied with a ribbon to prevent venereal diseases. This was an early attempt at controlling sexual health. And the word? Well, the origin of the term condom is uncertain, but there is one story that credits Dr. John Conton. He was an 18th century British physician who allegedly provided condoms to King Charles II. Even kings need to be careful. Even Italian lover Giacomo Casanova famously used sheep intestine condoms tied with ribbons. This highlights the luxury appeal of these early prophylactics. By the Renaissance, syphilis outbreaks were a huge pain. This led to even more widespread use of linen condoms across Europe. And by the 1700s, they were defined in literature as the dried gut of a sheep, used to prevent infections. Then, a major breakthrough happened. In the 1800s, Charles Goodyear's invention of vulcanized rubber brought about a revolution. This was huge. It made condoms more flexible, durable, and affordable. In the 1800s, condoms weren't just tucked away in private, they were starting to pop up in public places. You could find them at taverns, barber shops, and pharmacies. They weren't exactly advertised as birth control, though. The Comstock Act of 1873, a strict law at the time, 
meant that condoms could only be promoted as a way to prevent diseases, not for family planning. Then came World War I and World War II, two periods that changed a lot about health and safety. Early on, American and British soldiers weren't given condoms because of moral concerns, but high rates of STIs among troops eventually forced a change in policy. During World War II, American soldiers were finally given condoms, along with training materials promoting safe practices. It was a big step for the military, and condoms became a standard part of soldier gear similar to boots and helmets. By the middle of the 20th century, condoms were a common method of birth control in the US. They also came in different colors, textures, and thicknesses. But then in the 1960s, the birth control pill hit the market, and suddenly condom use dropped. People were more interested in the convenience of the pill for family planning, and condoms seemed less essential. But the 1980s brought a health crisis that brought condoms back into the spotlight, HIV and AIDS. The US Surgeon General even publicly recommended condom use to prevent the spread of the virus. This was a big moment for public health. Suddenly, condoms weren't just a choice, they were essential. In the United States, the condom industry got its start with Julia Schmidt, a German immigrant who worked with animal membranes. So Schmidt was basically a former sausage skin maker, but he then ventured into condoms in 1883 and quickly became one of the first major US manufacturers of lamb cased condoms. And that's an understatement. But through the centuries, one thing has remained the same. People have always sought ways to protect themselves, whether that's in love or life. Well, we've seen how condoms started. Now let's dive into what condoms are actually made of, starting with the classic material, lamb cecum. Julius Schmidt's first condoms in the late 1800s were crafted from this unusual source. And believe it or not, some condoms are still made from lambskin today. Lamb cecum is a section of the intestine, and it's specially processed to create what's known as a skin condom. These are mostly favored by people with latex allergies or those looking for a different sensation. While they prevent pregnancy effectively, skin condoms don't protect against STIs. The process is complex. Raw lambskins are cleaned, defatted, and salted to preserve them before being sent to finishing plants. These finishing plants are mostly based in New Zealand, which exports most of the world's supply of this material. But lambskin condoms are just a small part of the market today. They made up around 5.5% back in 1990 and likely a bit less now. That's because the majority of condoms today are made from latex, a natural material sourced from rubber trees. When tapped, these trees produce latex sap. This is processed to make the thin, flexible condoms we're familiar with. After all, latex has some unique properties. It's stretchy and offers a high level of protection against both pregnancy and STIs. But raw latex needs a bit of tweaking to be perfect for condom making, especially since it can vary in strength and elasticity. To make sure latex condoms are both effective and comfortable, manufacturers add stabilizing chemicals. These additives help balance the material's flexibility and strength, making it reliable under stress, if you know what we mean. Some condom brands even go a step further. They add lubricants to reduce friction, spermicides for extra pregnancy prevention, or a fine dusting of talc to prevent the condoms from sticking together. These added touches are all about making the user experience even better. So when you pick up a pack, you're getting a product that's smooth, effective, and ready to go right out of the wrapper. Now that we know what condoms are all about, let's get to the fun part, how they're made in a factory. It all starts with latex, a milky sap collected from rubber trees in tropical regions. This natural sap is filled with tiny rubber particles. When these particles are mixed with some clever chemical additives, they create a flexible and strong foundation for condoms. These chemicals help the latex bond well during the blending process, setting the stage for durability. In the next step, the latex and additives are blended into a thick rubbery paste known as a compound. This step is where the rubber gets its signature strength and stretch. Both these qualities are obviously necessary for a reliable condom. This compound makes condoms what they are. Once blended, the compound is stored in huge drums for about a week. 
This time isn't wasted. It allows the rubber bonds to strengthen through a process called vulcanization. This keeps the material elastic and strong. It also lets any tiny air bubbles escape so the latex is smooth and bubble free. Your comfort is important. So this step is all about making sure the latex is perfect. Now it's time to shape the condoms. The compound is poured into a large dipping machine, an impressive piece of equipment about 100 feet long. Here, glass rods, called mandrels, glide along a conveyor belt and get dipped into the latex compound over and over. Each dip is followed by a quick drying. This layering builds up just the right thickness. Once they're done, the condoms slide off the mandrels. They're trimmed and given a consistent shape. After forming, condoms head into a tumbling machine for a final polish. Here, they're lightly coated with talc or another powder. The reason for this is so they don't stick together in the packaging. You don't want to be annoyed every time you take one out. Quality is a big deal, so condoms go through strict testing before they can hit the shelves. As medical devices, condoms fall under Class II regulations. This means the FDA closely monitors their quality and safety. This includes biannual inspections of manufacturing plants to make sure all equipment is in top shape. Latex dipping machines, for instance, must keep running smoothly. No clogging or rust allowed. The FDA also checks that each batch meets standards for size, strength, and elasticity. Even imported condoms must go through FDA inspections to verify they're free from leaks, tears, or defects. Now to test the condoms themselves. First up, the balloon test inflates each condom until it bursts. A good condom should stretch to hold about 1.5 cubic feet of air, roughly the size of a watermelon. Next is the water leak test, where each condom is filled with 10 ounces of water, then rolled over a blotter paper to detect even the tiniest leak. Finally, there's an electronic test, where each condom is passed over a charged metal brush that detects any hidden holes. The cool thing about the electronic test is how it automatically rejects the defective ones. This rigorous testing makes sure that every condom on the shelf meets high standards for reliability and protection. There's a lot at stake. Once they pass the tests, condoms are almost ready for action. They're rolled, given a layer of lubricant, and sometimes treated with spermicide for added protection. Then, each one is sealed in a foil packet to stay fresh, safe, and ready to go when needed. After careful testing and secure packaging, condoms can be sent to store shelves and into people's lives. But this isn't the end of the story. There's more on the horizon. What's next for condoms? It turns out, a lot. Let's start with a newer option, the female condom. Introduced to the US in 1994 by female health company, it was designed to give women more control over their protection. It's made from a durable material called polyurethane and has rings on both ends. One ring helps secure it inside the vagina while the other stays outside. This helps keep it in place during use. This clever design gives effective protection against both STIs and pregnancy. Now the user's directly in charge. But what if you're allergic to latex? No worries. Scientists have been hard at work on alternatives. They've created male condoms from ultra-thin, super-strong polyurethane. These offer the same reliable protection as latex, but are ideal for those with allergies. Right now, they can be a bit pricier, but they're a great option for anyone needing a latex-free choice. And the developments keep coming. Developers are pushing the boundaries with even thinner materials and unique coatings. There are self-lubricating options to make the experience more comfortable, too. If you can believe it, there's even talk of smart condoms that could one day help detect STIs or even track performance data. It might sound far-fetched now, but given enough time, who knows? Condoms have come a long way from the days of linen and lambskin, and the future is full of exciting options for comfort, safety, and choice. And there you have it, the journey of how condoms are made. If you enjoyed learning about this process, keep your eyes peeled for the next one on our channel. Thanks for watching.